Hey, what's up guys? It's Ed here. Another video today on the Blackjack 42. It's a new boat from Pro Boat, as we are either all love or hate, it seems. Um, I really like mine, but today I thought I'd put together a video talking about some of the good and bad points of the boat. Um, there's a few mixed reviews on the thing, but honestly, from the get-go, if I had to sum this video up, very happy with the boat. Uh, a couple of small things that I would think would be worth changing, um, but we'll cover those off in this video. So pretty well, we'll start from the outside of the boat. We'll talk a bit about the rear side of the boat, and then we'll move to the inside of the boat. All right, guys, let's jump into it. All right, starting on the outside, guys, um, they're beautiful. Um, it's ABS plastic, as we all know. In, I've seen lots of these blow over. Um, they're, they're quite tough. Um, it's a similar material as to what the Sonic Wakes are made out of. Um, it's actually quite a thick, thick plastic in places. So I think it's just enough flex combined with some reinforced foam underneath this lid. I think it's quite a durable model um, and reasonably inexpensive as well. So from that point of view, I'm pretty happy with the boat. If you want to spend a lot more money, then you could go and get, you know, a big Zelos, something like that, which is, uh, you know, either carbon fiber or, or fiberglass. Um, the printed um, stickers on the side here, I was a little bit disappointed with that. It's obviously there just to cover the seam line. It is what it is. Stickers, unfortunately, tear a little easy, but then again, paint chips too. So take what you will from that. Um, moving on to the back of the boat. Um, all the hardware is great um, that I've found. It comes with the dual cooling outlet rudder. You see here I've run, um, obviously, a second cooling line. Strut settings. This is a big topic, it seems. A lot of people talking about how this boat has a tendency to blow over. Um, again, we'll talk a little bit about that just due to the light weight of the boat. But this is my strut setting. A lot of people are saying lower this strut as far down as possible, but... That results in a lot of porpoising occurring with boats, in my experience. So sometimes it's actually better to come up. I've run this uh, stock. I got about 52 miles an hour. And with uh, my upgraded prop, I hit about 62 miles an hour thereabouts. So Aussie here, so it was actually 84 k's an hour with the stock prop and 99 k's an hour with the uh, aftermarket prop, which I'll show. So guys, if you're having dramas with this strut, try raising it okay you can go too far or too far down but hopefully that information helps um, in here you can actually see my flex shaft is entirely removed here's the flex shaft here this floating bushing from the factory it's actually semi glued in place here in the back of the uh, the strut so I just used a hot little torch and applied a little bit of heat around here and then once this is uh, a little warm to the touch, okay, guys, it doesn't need to be roasting. You can get your fingers on here like this. You might need a rag or something just to, to cut, protect your hands from the prop, but that will actually pop out. Now, that's going to allow you to really service this flex shaft every couple of runs, two, three runs, generally speaking. Some guys do it every run. I'm happy with every third run, um, but that does make servicing the, the boat's flex shaft high consumable item um, quite easily um, while we're in the back here here's the aftermarket prop i'm running it is a 4814 chromed bronze prop you can get from rc boat bits it's uh, actually designed for the sonic wake um, the the blackjack 42 and the sonic wake both use the same prop out of the factory it's pretty ordinary in my opinion it's not sharp enough it cavitates a lot so i think a prop upgrade is you know going to be on the cards this one's great it's still a little bit of cavitation out of the hole but overall um, great traction great top hand i'm very happy cool temperatures as well so speaking of temperatures we'll have a quick look inside the boat guys single cooling line that comes from the factory perfectly fine perfectly adequate okay um I'm of the opinion that the more cooling you can give your electronics, the better. It's just going to be good for longevity, and it's just good practice. So one tip, guys, if you do end up using a bigger hose, um, when you do plug into your at least your uh, motor cooling here, make sure you use a zip tie here. <laughs> my first run, my boat filled up with water. It still was driving great, but it felt a little bit sluggish, and yeah, I had water lapping up pretty, pretty high, unfortunately. So... Run a couple of zip ties here, and that's going to sort that out. I've used a couple of nice little metal outlets. Replace the daggy ones that come from the factory. 
servo my stock servo died i'm not a big fan of horizon hobbies spectrum stock servos this is actually a servo out of an armor outcast one fifth um, it's not waterproof but it's held up for more runs than the factory servo did um, that servo glitched out very badly um, and i believe it actually took the factory receiver with it so a bit of a bummer there i have to get that all sorted out but i'm just going to be uh well i have been running with my fataba one so. other minor thing i had a problem with was the uh lock nuts that are used in these boats unfortunately my front right one stripped out look perhaps user error but one of the other ones is quite sort of stiff as well I've had the same problem on my Sonic Wake also, so I intend to be replacing those with a push-button style where you should just push down, turn it once, and job done. It saves getting all grubby paw prints all over your um, over your, your cowl as well. So a little bit of foam on the inside, guys, goes a long way. If you do have a pretty bad crash, that's going to save your, um, your hatch lid from sinking to the bottom. Um, all right, guys. Now, one last thing. These do... They're very light in the front end, okay? We're going to quickly talk about the running of the boat. Um, I run a couple of different sets of batteries here. They are pretty beefy and quite heavy. This is just a regular running pack. I just run two of these, eight cell. These weigh 750 grams each. They are pushed all the way forward in the battery trays, okay? And the boat will run quite fast. I actually got 99 kilometers an hour out of that pack there. Uh, they're my old speed run packs. Um, but she was a bit light in the nose, guys. So you've got to be careful. So you, I just went to my local tire store and he gave me these weights. These are 70 gram strips. You could get ones for trucks, which are a bit heavier. And you can pop those straight in there. So if you're running, say, a kilo and a half worth of batteries, 750 grams each, I would be putting approximately 200, 250 grams of weight up on that bow there, okay? Um, the next style you can go for is something here, which is my beefcake battery setup. I've got two sets of 5,000 milliamp 4S's hooked up in parallel with an adapter I've made. And this weighs in at uh, 1.15 kilos per set. So we're, we're looking at just over two kilos of batteries. Um, if the boat was too light before, well, that amount of batteries just makes this perfect. So... Look, guys, there's a bit of information on the boat. If you have any other questions about the boat, please feel free to ask them. I think that pretty well covers everything off on this boat at the moment that you really would want to know before buying it. I got this for about, well, I got it quite cheap, but it's a $1,000 boat here in Australia, basically. So excellent value for money. I'm very happy with it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Keep on ripping. Cheers.